So a few months ago I fell for the marketing trick that flaxseed oil has omega-3. Omega-3 has many health benefits as many people know, including increasing testosterone. And now what I ended up getting was gynecomastia, so that is female breast tissue, so man boobs, because of all the phytoestrogens that are, as the name already says, estrogens, that were overloading my liver and increasing my estrogen. Now, of course, the packaging didn't say that. It only said high in omega-3s. Now I have permanent gyno in one of my nipples, and it looks like a titty almost, and so I thought I would make this video so that you can prevent this from happening. By the way, this is also a concern if you're female because it's still going to overload your liver and create a lot of problems. Anyways, what I want to focus on today is the omega-3 in plants because they really have no omega-3 or not at least not the omega-3 everyone thinks about. Otherwise, you wouldn't hear comments like, eat walnuts, they are important for your brain to function. Okay, you would never hear that. Omega-3 is not just one type of fat, but a family of three different fats, which our bodies cannot produce, thus we have to acquire them from our diet. They are called omega-3 fatty acids and include ALA, also called, or in, in its full name, alpha linolenic acid, EPA, icosopentanoic acid, and DHA, docosahexanoic acid. So, of course, for the sake of this video, I'll just call them ALA, EPA, and DHA. So when someone says omega-3, he could mean any of these fats, even though they are all very different from each other in their function and importance. So ALA being the least important of them all, and as you could guess, the only omega-3 fat found in plant foods. Its main function is to produce energy, which sounds like it's completely useless, which is not 100% the case because the energy production in certain cells can have different outcomes, but eh, we're still we are lacking some information here, but EPA and DHA are of greater importance as you will see. The body can however convert ALA to EPA and DHA, but before we go over that, let me first explain EPA's and DHA's functions. EPA has many functions, including energy production again, and it is used to form something called eicosanoids. So eicosanoids can also be formed from omega-6 fats, which we kind of want to avoid. It's probably why you want to increase your omega-3s, but the ones that EPA forms are more anti-inflammatory than the ones that the omega-6 fats form, so the eicosanoids. That is why we see the decrease of inflammation in all of these omega-3 studies. EPA is especially important for heart health and just overall decreasing inflammation has so much benefits, increasing or decreasing uh, the risk of getting diseases, etc. Direct sources of it would be animal products, especially fish that is high in omega-3, so fatty fish. DHA is the one that is important for our brain. In fact, about 9% of our brain weight is DHA. And that is also the reason why animal brains are a great source of DHA for humans, because they also need DHA for the brain. And so DHA is being stored in the organ that they need it for, so the brain. It is also found in higher concentrations in the retina that is in the eyes and so it's involved in healthy eyes and sperm. So there we finally have the direct testosterone aspect even though the anti-inflammatory properties of EPA can also lead to higher testosterone. Now DHA provides a rich source of energy and it is also used to form eicosanoids. So Basically, it can do anything that ALA and EPA can do, and even more. So it's really the king of omega-3s. DHA is important for the development of a child, especially for the brain and eyes, because I already explained that it is needed for that. It is found in higher concentrations in that area. And that is also the reason why it is found in higher concentrations in human sperm. Again, animal products such as fish are a great source. 
And we can say for sure that the functions of EPA and DHA are superior to the ones of ALA and that all the health benefits in that we see in these omega-3 studies are coming from EPA and DHA mostly. Getting back to the conversion rate of ALA to EPA and DHA I talked about earlier, by the way, I'm getting tired of these names too, okay? <laughs> it's a mess. The conversion rate of ALA to EPA is around 4%, which is it's obviously anything but ideal. Now, there are several factors that play a role in that whole conversion process that I'm also going to cover. And we can say for sure that humans are meant and can only consume adequate amounts of EPA and DHA by the consumption of animal products. Um, in the end, I'll give you a list of what types of fish are still okay to consume. And I'll also touch on supplementation because most fish oil supplements are oxidized and actually cause more harm than actual good. Anyways, a typical argument that could be brought up is if the conversion rate of ALA to EPA is only 4%, well then we just have to consume a lot more ALA. Bad idea. Could have honestly been coming from me some time ago, but that was because I did not know about anti-nutrients and the omega-6 fat content of some of these omega-3 or these plants high in omega-3. First of all, anti-nutrients. So anti-nutrients are compounds that plants produce to protect themselves against any living being trying to eat them since they don't have any weapons or anything to fight back. Um, they have these compounds. Herbivores such as rabbits, cows, elephants, so just plant eaters, have digestive systems that are adapted to these compounds. However, our digestive systems have not adapted to anti-nutrients, at least not nearly as much as herbivores have. We as humans are omnivores, meaning we eat plants and meat. Now, every indigenous group saw so our ancestors have had meat as the base of their nutrition, trying to suddenly change that is completely crazy since our bodies have not adapted to that and therefore we lack certain nutrients that are only present in animal products such as EPA and especially DHA. A complete deficiency of certain nutrients can actually lead to death. Not just disease, death. Now you might be asking, how it is possible that there are people that seem to only consume plant foods and yet they are still alive. The less we have of a certain nutrient, the more the body goes into saving mode, meaning it will turn down on certain metabolic functions and will use only the last bits of nutrients for only the most important functions. It's just like when you're fasting, your body goes into saving mode and tries to burn as little calories and minerals and nutrients as possible to keep the body alive as long as possible. That's a survival mechanism. Now, most of us don't need that survival mechanism nowadays anymore because of all the food availability we have, yet many people are running on saving mode on certain nutrients or actually on many nutrients, not just on certain nutrients, believe me on many, many nutrients. Once you add DHA to your diet, depending on the severity of your deficiency, of course, you will feel like your brain reboots because the body was not providing certain areas of the brain with a lot of DHA anymore. I remember the first time that I had some fish oil. It felt like I was 50 IQ smarter after that and I could, I could just work so much better. My whole brain, it just worked so much better. There's many different types of anti-nutrients and we are still discovering more and more, but they always damage our body to some degree. Phytoestrogens, which are a high amount in flax seeds and thus in its oil, are created by plants to make predators, especially insects, infertile. Now you have to imagine consuming such a large amount of flax seeds is completely unnatural. We would have not been able to find that many flax seeds in nature. And <laughs> We would have for sure not gathered these many, uh, that many flax seeds and then squeezed them so and only consumed its oil. Also, our ancestors actually knew about anti-nutrients, 
That's why they had preparation methods like soaking, germination, fermentation to reduce the anti-nutrient content because they were feeling that it was damaging them. Of course, when we humans consume flaxseed oil in such large amounts, it can lead down the same path. No matter which type of omega-3 plant oil you're choosing or which type of seed, they are always high in anti-nutrients that damage your liver and also impair mineral absorption. That is something to keep in mind in general because another reason why I got liver damage and gynecomastia that I talked about earlier were lentils because I read so much about them being so healthy. Lentils are high in protein considering it's a plant and they are high in minerals so it seemed like the perfect food with zero side effects. Wrong. The higher the protein content and mineral content of a plant, the higher the anti-nutrient content. So basically it's just paper value. And most of these minerals are actually bound to anti-nutrients and they have bad bioavailability anyways. So meaning you won't absorb, <laughs> it's just paper value, okay? And even if you absorb some of these minerals, you're also gonna absorb the anti-nutrients, nothing that you want. Just overly gonna stress your liver, it's just paper value. So you, you aren't getting any benefit from the high mineral content they stress your liver to a higher degree, lead to inflammation of your digestive system because of something called lactins that legit put holes into your digestive tract, so doesn't sound too good, right? And also, the protein has a very bad absorption rate, so again, it's just like paper value. You could probably divide the protein content of lentils just by two, first of all, and then they also have a bad amino acid profile. The same goes for nuts and all that stuff since they are so high in minerals and protein, I mean considering it's a plant. If you want more information about how to reduce the anti-nutrient content of plant foods, then you can watch my soaking guide. Soaking does however only reduce and not remove the anti-nutrients, so these foods, especially nuts, lentils, flax seeds, should not be consumed in any case. Now I want to touch on something else as well because I haven't destroyed the plant foods high in omega-3 enough yet. Omega-3 fatty acids should be in a certain balance or ratio to the omega-6 fatty acids. You probably know that and that's why you wanted to increase your omega-3s. The ratio should actually be one to one. That is what we have or what we would have obtained in nature. Nowadays, most people are just getting so much omega-6s that you only have to focus on getting more omega-3s. So walnuts do not only have omega-3s, same for all other nuts, but also omega-6s. In fact, they actually have 4.0 times the amount of omega-6s to omega-3s. So how are you ever gonna get a good ratio? You don't have to be super smart to, to understand that if you eat more, it's, it's not gonna change. It's the same ratio. Also, since the omega-6s are so much higher than the omega-3s, like in most modern diets in general, ALA will not be converted to anything at all for most of the time, so not even the 4%. So nothing about walnuts is gonna improve your brain function. Oh. Obviously, you could know that by just consuming walnuts and then not feeling that your brain is getting better or that your brain reboots. So now, how do we fix this? How can we have real omega-3 fats, especially EPA and DHA in our diet? That is seafood and meat. By the way, animal products have all three omega-3 fats, so ALA, EPA and DHA, so you don't have to worry about not getting enough ALA and needing to consume that from plant products. It's not a thing, okay? You get enough ALA from animal products. I have already touched on the fish oil supplements being oxidized. Whenever an oil is oxidized, you can just imagine it as rancid fat, so it's past as the expiration date. Oxidation of fat occurs over time. In nature, we will just eat the fish right away and not throw it into the sun, let it sit there for five days and then eat it. 
but with modern processing these oils can sit in certain facilities too long and thus become rancid. Especially omega-3s, just like the omega-6s found in vegetable seed oils called linoleic acid, are very prone to oxidation, meaning they oxidize faster than others, especially when you apply heat to them, so all of your fried food has rancid oil on it, um, because it just speeds up the chemical reaction. Now to avoid that, uh, avoid these fish oil supplements that come in pill forms and look for actual fish oils, uh, which you can have a small amount of every day. The fish oils should also be from wild caught fish. But since our oceans are so polluted with plastics, heavy metals, other chemicals um, that companies have just dumped into the ocean and even toxic elements from the World War II, we should go for something like cod that is one of the lesser polluted fish. You can also have fish from time to time. The wild caught fish is definitely better than the farm raised fish. Um, the farm raised fish just doesn't have a good uh, omega 3 to omega 6 ratio anymore. The unnatural food and all the chemicals that they are getting alters their fat storages and thus their omega 3 to omega 6 ratio. So again we would go for something like cod it's one of the least polluted fish. Cod liver oil is also a great source of vitamin A, which plants also have zero of. Gonna explain that in a future video. Uh, but something to note is that if you get cod liver oil from wild caught fish or just any fish oil, then definitely put it into the fridge after opening the bottle because that slows down the oxidation. About the amount, you don't wanna have too much of it because of all the toxins in the ocean, but you also don't want to have too little of it to become DHA deficient. So I would go for something about like 5 milliliters every day, maybe double the amount in the beginning and then just keep it at maintenance level. When you take omega-3s, you should feel a strong boost in your cognitive function. So meaning when you're not getting this strong boost anymore, you should go down with the amount because you're just adding more and more toxins and if you're not getting this cognitive boost then it means that most of the DHA is just turned into energy. Fish is however not the only source of omega-3s but for sure the best. We also have meat and brain. So animal brain is another good source but most people just don't want to consume it. Uh, by the way I'm talking about grass fed and grass finished that also applies for the meat. Because when animals are fed grains and soy, it alters their omega-3 to omega-6 ratios with the increase of omega-6s, which then lowers or depletes your omega-3s. The best ratio that you can achieve in meat is like a one-to-one -one ratio, but that is unrealistic for most people because that's so high quality, it's, you can't even pay that. What's more realistic would be a two-to-one or three-to-one ratio. Of course, the 2s and 3s being the omega-6s. Just ask around at local farms or look in the internet to get grass-fed, grass-finished meat. When you eat that conventional meat, which has a very bad omega-6 to omega-3 ratio, it will deplete your omega-3s. Then you have to add in more fish oil to balance it out, thus adding more and more toxins because of seafood and the conventional meat. It's just gonna lead to liver damage and gonna fuck up your life, okay? You don't want that. You wanna have the best life experience in the short time that we have on this planet. Anyways, for more information about a sustainable healthy diet, check out my other videos. And I'm also doing consultations, 30 euros per hour at the moment, will change in the future. And as always, have a good day, a good night, and a good life.